Good afternoon. Uh, in this video, I could give a, uh, another example of context being an issue in translation. Um, I'm going to bring a Bible works here and uh, look at your Genesis chapter 20, verse 13. Uh, it reads, And it came to pass when God caused me to wander my father's house. Uh, in that case, God, of course, is Elohim. Uh, but the verb that precedes it, wander, uh, it's an hip field stem, which means causative, uh, caused me to wander, and, uh, but it's in a plural. It's a plural predicate preceding Elohim. Now, usually, uh, Elohim takes a singular predicate, and that's why, because it has a singular meaning, and therefore the verb will be in the singular. Uh, the, uh, in this case, it's taking a plural predicate, uh, and usually when it takes a plural predicate, it refers to God, it's not God. But because of the context of this verse and who's speaking, uh, uh, Abraham, uh, the translation is translated as God. Now, uh, there's a side point here, the Septuagint, in order to get around that, uh, they, they actually changed the, uh, the verb into a singular. And so that, and that, that particular Hebrew uh, verb is used only twice in scriptures. Uh, it's also used in Isaiah 19.13. And uh, in that case, they, make, they do make it a plural. But in this case, they make it a singular uh, in order to uh, uh, make it uh, fit with God and get and avoid that issue of plural predicate. But uh, this is a plural predicate in Genesis 2013, and the context dictates that it be translated as God, not God's, <clears throat> not the grammar. If you go to First Kings, First uh, Kings 19, let's see, First Kings 19. 19.2, he had Jezebel, he had <laughs> verse Kings 19.2, then Jezebel sent a messenger on to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me. In this case, you have Elohim, preceded by a uh, plural predicate again, but in this context, it's translates as God, it's not God, uh, as the uh, New American Standard has and the uh, NIV had. Uh, and uh, so that's a case again where uh, context is going to come into play not just pure grammar, um, and uh, you have to look at the uh, uh, issues here of um, who's doing the speaking and uh, the context uh, as it, as it uh, pertains to the uh, verse itself. So this is uh, usually uh, grammar uh, is pretty consistent. It's the exceptions, it's the exceptions that uh, have to be dealt with, and that's when context comes into play and looking at the verses. And the translator uh, is going to have to look at those verses and say, well, the, the grammar says one thing, but the context says something else, and therefore he has to make the correct decision and translate accordingly. And that is a constant throughout uh, uh, all translation work. So don't anybody tell you that uh, 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 translation is simply plugging in uh, grammatical principles. Uh, the exceptions are what make a good trans understanding exceptions are what make a good translator. Understanding both languages, the idioms, the figures of speech, the grammatical uh, differences, the grammatical exceptions. And this is a case here where Elohim, when it takes a predicate, usually is trans uh, a plural predicate, is usually translated in the plural. Uh, but then we saw in our case of uh, 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 Genesis 20, because Abraham speaking, uh, is translated uh, in the singular. And uh, uh, that's context. That's context changing the translation uh, to, mit, to match exactly what God wants to say and for us to understand it in the English. Amen. Thank you.